everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're continuing on with our adventure with Skavix Plague Pack and today we're going to use them to talk about doing glowing smoke. This can be a really tricky effect but it's actually really fun. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Personally, I don't really like when models have painted or sculpted air. So this means like smoke and little wisps of things, things that don't really have a physical tangibility in the world, and yet we're supposed to paint them like they're solid objects. It's somewhat annoying, but if we're going to deal with it, then we might as well do it cool and make it look awesome. So today, we're going to take you through, because a couple of these little plague monk boys have little plumes of smoke on them. And of course, Skaven don't walk around with normal braziers just burning frankincense or something. No, they've got cool warp stone gas. So we're going to make it some fun, green, glowing smoke. Let's head over to the desk, and we'll show you how to do it. All right, we're gonna start out with a little bit of tenebrous gray. Now, you can use any color you want, but here's my best advice when you're doing smoke. Don't just mix black and white. As with all things, when you're working with neutral tones, something with an actual color in it is going to be more interesting. Since this is going to have green in it, a little bit of purple in the tone will act as a contrasting color. Purple and green, it looks good together. Think villain colors, think Dr. Uh, sorry, I think uh, Lex Luthor's, you know, supervillain outfit, right? So by infusing a little bit of hue, of real color, we can do a lot of work. Now we're going to chart out the individual volumes. I'm going to hit the little edges of the smoke, and then everything else with this light is just getting pushed towards the top. And this is just traditional layering. I'm adding in increasing amounts of that reddish gray. Again, it has that warm, sort of ruddy tone. It'll suit well with the purple. And I'm just highlighting toward the top of each individual volume in the smoke, making it look like so each individual billow is getting highly contoured. Now, as I go and continue highlighting, I'm going to highlight less and less and less, of course, each time, just like with all layering. But I'm also only, I'm going to restrict the amount of the thing that I highlight. What I mean by that is you'll notice in some of the later steps, I really only hit the top part of the plume with the highlight, or I focus in much more on the top part of the plume. Because in the end, we want the, the part of the plume that is the most distant from the source to be the most gray, the most lit. It would be the most thin, and hence the most light would be coming through it and it would be the most sort of light value. So you can see there how I hit only the highest part of it, right? Now, to help smooth out all my layering, we're gonna go back in with a glaze, but this will be the first of many. Whenever we're gonna do normal smoke, you could just kind of stop with a step like this, a few back and forth glazes and you're ready to go. If we're gonna do something like glowing glazes, then we have a lot more work in front of us. But step one is we want to make sure there's plenty of space for the shadow. So I'm glazing down here, pulling everything darker, using a darker tone to suppress some of the highlighting work I've done. And that's because right now I'm going to come in with this ivory color and we're just going to set our values. Now, when we were doing glow, the key is all of the deepest spaces need to be what gets the light. So the inside of his little brazier, up under the hook, and then the lower parts of each recess. So I'm going to hit the, now we're going the opposite of whatever we did before. So when the plumes were getting contoured, we were highlighting them towards the top, right? When we're doing the glow, we're starting at the crease that's under each individual volume, each, each individual little bubble of smoke, each contour, each volume. And then we're bringing it up. And this is going to look horrible when you first do it. Don't worry. The goal here is we are trying to set the inner hottest glow of the light and we'll build from there. Now, right away, you're probably freaking out and saying, oh my God, Vince, you made that look completely ugly. Hey, I understand. The reality is we're going to have to make it look real ugly here for a minute before we make it look cool. If you want to stop before the glow and just do the smoke, 
You can stop back before I add anything into the recesses and end up with a cool looking just plume of smoke. But if you want to make it glow and really pop, then hey, forge ahead with me. All right, so now I'm just going to keep trying to smooth that out. The first thing I do is I realize I didn't quite have enough dark space above to work. So I'm going to sort of glaze back down, try to fuzz some of the edges of that hard white that I put on, smooth it back into place. But it's this isn't a step one, step two, step three process. When you're working with glow and with OSL and anything like that, I need you to get rid of this mindset that you're supposed to be baking, that it's some kind of recipe thing where you can just go okay now do this now put a quarter cup of this in now do this and you're all done that's not how it works whenever you're working with something like osl any kind of glowing source your subconscious brain has a lot of preconceived notions about how things work so you're going to need to be able to screw it up you're going to need to slightly adjust it go back and forth a little more light a little more dark change the position slightly move things around over and 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 over again until it feels like it's in the right place and so as a point of fact i'm just going to work back and forth quite a lot here once i'm relatively happy with my hottest lights uh, then we come in with the actual glow so this is golden high flow fluorescence for my money these are some of my favorite fluorescence to work with um, you notice how this is just like nuclear. I mean, it pops. It's so bright. It's so intense. But it's also very thin. It will have basically no effect on anything that you put on that's dark and black. It won't do much of anything at all. You can see I'm, I'm going to push it up there, and it will tint that a little. But when it dries, it's going to basically completely be suppressed. And that's the key. You do need to push this green beyond just where you did white. So you can see how I'm, I'm working over everything that was white, but also beyond. And now just begins the back and forth refinement. So here I'm going back to a dark color, trying to smooth the transition. And a lot of this looks pretty rough at this moment, but don't worry, we're going to work back and forth a lot. The real journey from this point forward is constantly trying to smooth the transition because with each little individual puff little plume little volume in the smoke we want it to transition from on the low side being an intense uh bright green okay into a sort of darker green into the darkest area of the smoke which should be in the dead middle of each volume the sort of center point where your eye is going to meet right the horizontal Right in the middle is the darkest spot. Then transition back up into light, but into the neutral gray light of the uh, of the ambiance of the environment. So all I'm doing with this point forward is just mixing the previous colors you saw me use. Meaning I take a little green, I mix it with a little bit of the black, I mix it with a little bit of the white, I mix it with a little bit of the reddish gray, whatever and i just keep adjusting and effectively working those volumes right until i get the right balance on each individual little plume so making sure that each recess has the correct amount of light it transitions into a full shadow and then transitions back up into a full light now on the lower part of the smoke i want to talk about that for a minute because in the upper plume that's actually kind of the easier part here you can see I'm redefining some of the tops of the plumes. You want to make sure that none of that green gets down onto the top of the plume. You want it to be caught, hidden inside, because you're not really capturing an emanating glow. You're capturing an inner glow. So hence why I have to go in with the gray and re-solidify all of the, uh, the tops of my volumes to make sure that it's, it's nice and clear, the cut there between. With the lower parts of the smoke, uh, there we want to in between where it's where the the sort of sculptor has had cracks in the smoke where it's going back into the brazier that's where we want to hide the light and that's where we're going to then stick that same green and do that same transition so the innermost areas are what gets lit now there are parts of the smoke that are exposed that don't necessarily on that lower side um, have any green near them. So there you treat them much like an, uh, one of the upper volumes and you work some of the gray, 
the sort of reddish gray color into that because that smoke still needs to catch the light where it's wisping out of the actual brazier itself. Moving back up here, you can see that what I'm just constantly doing is just slightly adjusting these volumes. And all of this is working in very, very thin glazes. So everything from the midpoint of this on is just glazes and smoothing and smoothing and smoothing and refining um, because it's very easy for it to be and to end up quite rough. So you notice I work light and then work back to dark and then work light and then work back to dark. When you're trying to do this, one of the reasons it's so hard to blend is not just because you're working with acrylic paint and not just because you're working with very thin fluorescents, which you know are, are naturally quite transparent, but also because your value here is going from basically one as bright as possible to near white. I mean, that green is being under, it's being underlit by near white, all the way back up to, uh, or all the way down, I'm sorry, to black. So you're trying to run the entire value spectrum with acrylic paints, which blend like crap all of the time. So trying to go from white to black is really hard and takes a lot of back and forth glazing and blending to make it look smooth, okay? But you can see after constant adjustments, we're actually getting to a pretty nice place where it's feeling quite organic. So now I'm just smoothing out some of the tops, the grays, making sure that those areas that are supposed to be like that uh, are, are still looking nice and smooth. Once you've done all this, it's important to establish that hottest, hot, hottest center of your glow. That's when we come back in with the white and we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, just hit that smallest space. And then, boom, we come back in with another layer of the green. So by continually doing white, putting the green on top, add another layer of white in a small area, put the green on top, another layer of white. You can repeat this as many times as possible, getting thinner and thinner and smaller and smaller each time. And each time will make it slightly more intense and make it pop and glow even more until it really looks like it's just jumping off the figure. There we go. He's all done. Uh, I think he came out pretty cool. That smoke really pops, really glows, and it's actually a simple process. There's a lot of like just simple back and forth and back and forth to get the balance right to where it tricks your eye into thinking you're looking at the right thing, that you're looking at something that is glowing, lit from below, but also a somewhat dark, tangible object. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Remember, we have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got questions, drop those down in the comments below. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so. There's a Patreon link down there uh, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. There's also links to all of my books that I publish with Uncle Adam. Uh, we have a company called Snarling Badger Studios, and we do fun, fast, easy-to-learn skirmish games. You can find those down there, links below. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.